Welcome to my setting up hotkeys video. I'm glad you are here, not only because this time I really went all out in PowerPoint, but also because hotkeys are a very important topic. Learning how to play a game mechanically, that means intelligently assigning, memorizing and mastering hotkeys, is the first step on the way towards competitive gameplay. After all, what's the benefit in being a great thinker who just can't get anything done? But heaven, if it's the first step, why isn't this the first video on your channel? Well, excellent question, my friend. Because the likes of me assume that everyone is capable of pressing F1 and reading, opening the game options and reading, and familiarizing themselves with the mechanical aspects of any game by trial and error. <clears throat> I suppose the average attention span when confronted with text-based material has shortened over the last years, so it turns out that not everybody is capable anymore. It took me some time to fully understand that people actually want and need this video. Some of you probably know that my clanmate Speed2 has already made a video on the topic. If you're interested in a second perspective, you can find the link in the video description below. But heaven, if someone else has already made a hotkey video, why are you making another one? Well, excellent question, my friend. First, the F1 menu has a new layout now, hotkey labels have been introduced, and some useful extra hotkeys have been added. Second, and people have specifically requested that I share my hotkey layout. Apparently, my hotkeys have more sex appeal to some people. No homo, please. And third, I want to talk a little bit about why my hotkeys are where they are and what you can do to train your muscle memory for your hotkeys. And lastly, I have a link for those of you who are interested in making custom hotkeys for quick selection. So let's get started by pressing F1 in game and going through the hotkey list together. But heaven, why don't you just share your game preps file and your mods with us? Excellent question, my friend. First, my configuration is not safe for life. It has hotkeys in there which reset other hotkeys, so if you press them by accident, you will break stuff. It has hotkeys in there that can force any factory to build Harveys, doesn't matter which faction. Incompatible factories will no longer be listed in the idle factories panel, but they won't construct anything either. It has hotkeys in there that try to make T1 interceptors construct power storage, which obviously doesn't work. And the latest addition to my collection, I proudly present my select all destroyers hotkey that also selects frigates by accident with a 5 seconds delay. And of course, there's some stuff in there that has the potential to crash your game client side, so you're going to lose some of your precious dual gap rating you have worked so hard for. Sorry. I won't share my configuration anytime soon. Not for signs, not for shits and giggles, not for optimizations from a very friendly coder. And second, setting up your hotkeys yourself has the benefit of making you think critically about what you're doing. You can make adjustments based on your playstyle, workflows, and other individual factors. And third, the process of setting up your hotkeys is also the first step towards memorizing your hotkeys. I don't want to withhold this learning opportunity from you. So again, let's get started by pressing F1 in game and going through the hotkey list together. Pressing F1, and this is what pops up. We start with hot building, this one. There is a recommended layout for the hot building section in the video description below. Note that the guy who made hot build is using a German keyboard, so some keys may be in a different position on your keyboard. You should bind the actions by the keyboard layout and not by what it says on the key. For example, if your Y key is where his Z key is, use Y instead of Z to construct mobile anti-air transports and experimentals. Open the link in the video description below and bind all actions in the hot building category according to the suggested layout. If it asks you if it's okay to unbind existing actions, confirm. Do that now, since the rest of the video will make a lot more sense to you once you have the hot build category set up. After you are done assigning everything, let's talk about how hot build is organized. For units and factories, it simply assigns every T1 unit by order of appearance in the build menu. To the first row of keys on your keyboard from left to right. Okay, so let's check this out. 
here we go. W, E, R, T, Z, for you it's Y, or whatever keyboard you're using, U, and so on. Upgrade that thing from left to right. S, D, well, there is no D for Aeon, but that's just Aeon. F, G, H, J, K. From left to right, very easy. Upgrade again. X, C, Y. Well, this one was added later, so it doesn't have a hotkey. B, N. All right, this is how it works for Navy, for air, for land, for everything. All right. So very easy to memorize these things. As long as you memorize the position in the factory menu, you also know the hotkey. For structures, Hotbill tries to keep the most frequently used structures on the left side of the keyboard and it has the less frequently used structures on the right side of the keyboard. That's because the left side of the keyboard is easier to access as your left hand should be resting in proximity of the left shift key whenever you are idle. Especially in Supreme Commander, you never want to move your left hand too far away from the left shift key. What about structures of different tech levels? Okay, we can check this out. So Hotbuild is going to grab the highest tech level structure your engineer can build. If you want a lower tech structure, double tap the key. So for example, if you have a T3 engineer and you press F once, it will grab a T3 power generator. If you press F twice, it will grab the T2 power generator and three times for the T1 power generator. And sometimes structures that aren't different tech levels of the same thing are still bundled under the same hotkey. So for example, E is going to cycle through radars, but it's also going to have sonars in there. This is a sonar, right? And for example, shields, key R, right, is also going to have stealth fields in there. And F is not only power generators, but also hydro and recently also power storage, okay? So very handy. You will get the hang of it quickly if you try it out in a sandbox. So that's all for hot building. Let's move on to hot building extra keys. I use Control Shift S for mass storage. Using something with S for something related to mass makes sense because S is the hotkey for mass extractors. This way it's easy to memorize. And that's actually the only key I have set up here. And why am I using Control Shift S and not just Control S, for example? Uh, because most of the time I build mass storage when I press G to access a mass extractor cap template or a mass fabricator template with some storages in there. The only exception is when I'm expecting a lot of reclaim in the late game. And then I select a mass storage, just one, and I draw a line of these to prepare for the incoming reclaim. Since this doesn't happen a lot, I don't need my mass storage hotkey to be any easier to reach. Control Shift S is fine. All right, so the hotkey you're assigning to something should depend on how often you use it and the things you use often are going to be the things that are easy to reach and things you don't use often are going to be things that are a little bit harder to reach. So a combination of control shift, for example. That's like the intuition. So let's move on to orders. The most important learning for this category is also that all the stuff you use a lot should be close to your left shift key. Uh, this way you can reach it easily. If you run out of keys there, you can use combinations with control or control shift. Well, now, if you're interested in my exact layout and the reasoning behind it, you can keep watching this part. If not, you can also skip to the next category by clicking on the timestamp in the video description below. This video is fully indexed with timestamps. So I have Q and shift Q for attack. A placing attack commands on the ground lets you manually aim against dodging targets or increase the effective damage or range of some area damage weapons. Since I use this action a lot, the hotkey must be sufficiently close to left shift. Q and shift Q is great for that. Now I use, here it is, 
I use A and Shift A for reclaim, because such an important action should be extremely easy to reach. Let's also close to left shift. Y and Shift Y are my patch roll commands. Here we go. A patch roll is essential for air micro and reclaim, so that's also something you use a lot. That's why it must be close to the Shift key, easy to reach. Keep in mind that I am also using a German keyboard, just like the author of Hot Build. So my Y key may be your Z key. Now, this stuff. Control Q and Control Shift Q is my spread attack hotkey. This is very easy to memorize because spread attack is something related to attack and all that changes compared to my attack hotkey is the control key. Remember, my attack hotkey is Q and if I press Control Q, it's spread attack. Very easy to memorize. I find it easy to reach Control Shift and letter combinations if the letter is on the far left side of the keyboard. And Q certainly is on the far left side of the keyboard, so it's easy for me to reach. And that's why it's my spread attack hotkey. Control A and Control Shift A are my assist commands. I don't really need this hotkey unless I want to place the assist marker on the ground to save time. But I like having the orders whose uh, button is going to appear uh, at the bottom left side of the UI. I like to have these around the left shift key of my keyboard as well. Makes it easy to memorize. Now control Y and uh, control shift Y is uh, my repair key. So again, for you, this is probably control Z, control shift Z or whatever keyboard layout you have. French people have a very different keyboard layout, I heard. So in any case, that is uh, my repair key is useful for upgrading structures that are losing HP, and that's something you need to be able to reach fast. Uh, because an assist order on that upgrading structure would uh, assist the upgrade instead of refilling the HP bar. And this way you can save some structures that are upgrading. And that's why I have this repair hotkey. Now my move command is, uh, where is it? Move. Here we go. Uh, this is the key under escape. So this is called differently depending on uh, your keyboard. The key under escape for me is the move command. It is easy to reach and uh, over there, the risk of hitting a neighboring key is minimal because there are just two neighboring keys. And you can tell by the top left border that this is like the lone movement key, sort of. Why have a movement key? Well, the benefit of a move command instead of using right click to move your stuff is that you won't give a reclaim assist or attack order by accident. This has all sorts of uses, but it's probably most important for a dodge micro. Let's say you get bombed, try to evade a strat, and instead your ACU reclaims instead of running. So that's going to suck. That's why a movement command is very useful. Now, if I press Control and the key under escape, that is where? Here we go. Stop and cancel all factory orders except the current one. Uh, that is my soft stop command. It's easy to memorize because stopping is the opposite of moving and the key under escape is related to moving for me. So it's also related to not moving if I press control. Soft stop is very useful. I have a separate video on it. The link is in the video description below if you are interested in how to use soft stop and what to use it for. Now I use tab to pause. That's not pausing the game. That's pausing the construction or upgrading of things. Such an important action should be one key close to shift because uh, this allows you to balance your economy and uh, like respond to stalls very quickly. And I use caps lock to pause the unit ability such as shield, radar or stealth. To balance out once eco fast, it's important to be able to switch off low interest unit abilities that consume power. And that's why this action should also be one key close to shift. In the menu here, it says slash instead of caps lock because I remapped my keyboard's caps lock key to slash. I never use caps lock anyways. This has the benefit of not chatting in full caps after pausing a unit ability. My ferry command, ferry command, 
For permanent transport routes is control tab. It's just a random combination of things that are easy to reach around left shift. And now very interesting control K and control shift K. Over here. And uh, reading tables, truly difficult. Here we go, over here. So control K is the one that has the five seconds countdown before something self destructs. And that is control K. The instant self destruct without the cooldown or countdown, if you wish, is on control shift K. Uh, I believe that it's important to assign this action to keys that require both hands to use, or at least require your left hand to stretch a lot, because this is not something you want to hit by accident. Make sure that you don't map uh, Control J or Control L to anything, because you could hit Control K instead. If you are on a keyboard uh, with a different uh, keyboard layout, then just make sure that whatever your Control K self destruct key is, don't have anything next to it mapped to something different. That's all from the orders category. Let's move on to selection. Everything with group in the name should be left as is. The commands related to control groups, uh, which are used for custom quick selection, uh, all have group in the name. So append group one and so on. Uh, in simple terms, if you have something selected, such as this engineer, and you press Control-1, you can do something else later. Press uh, 1 again. Let's say we build something here. And I press 1 again. Um, if you press it once, it is just going to select whatever is in this group. And if you press it twice, it is going to uh, focus the camera on whatever is there. And this is called Control Group. So. All the additional control group uh, commands in this list, uh, interacting with factories or adding to selection instead of changing the selection, they do exactly uh, as it's described over here. So this adds and this selects factories. All right, and you can just leave them as is. They're pretty good. So scrolling to the top again, cycle through idle factories. This is an important hotkey. I'm guilty of not using this one enough, but navigating through the avatar panel, uh, which is wasting some precious milliseconds. Control W is easy to memorize for selecting idle factories because W is the hot build command for constructing a factory. So selecting a factory should be Control W. Select all fighters is really important because it lets you react more quickly if your opponent is bombing or dropping you or trying to fight your air. Because C is the hot build for stationary anti-air, control Z, control C, pardon, is easy to memorize. I like that it's very easy to reach as well. Select all bombers is also useful. B is the hot build for strat and extra easy to memorize because bomber starts with a B. I find Control-B sufficiently easy to reach. Select all gunships is the same. G is the hot build for T2 gunship, and gunship starts with a G. Uh, select all land units is a situational hotkey. It can be useful when the enemy ICU overextends and you try to swarm it with everything you got. Control-Shift-X is a good hotkey because X is the hot build for point defense, so it would make sense if control X was used for land unit selection. Control X, however, is what I used for a custom hotkey that selects all direct fire land units on the screen. So control shift X is my hotkey that includes off screen land units. Select all naval units follows a similar logic. V is the hot build for torpedo tower, so I'm using control V to select boats. I could refine the hotkey by using Control-V for on-screen boats and Control-Shift-V for all boats, including the off-screen ones. Or I could use uh, different hotkeys for different types of boats. As you can see, my setup isn't perfectly consistent or optimized, but I'm trying to improve it over time. And uh, this one. Select idle engineers on the screen is a lifesaver. Bind it to space. I have a custom hotkey that is minimally different from this one, which is 
why this looks unassigned in this menu. Uh, it's up to you if you want to implement this as a custom hotkey or use the standard one. In any case, you should bind one of the two to space. Uh, space is, by the way, also going to tilt the camera, but only if you hold it. If you just tap it briefly, it selects just the engineers. So very good. I haven't found any way of making space not tilt the camera if you hold it, in case you're wondering. Here, Control e uh, select nearest idle air scout. And that's very practical uh, because if you have multiple scouts, you can use it to spread them out into different areas quickly without sending two scouts into the same area or overriding the route of a scout that's already on the way to somewhere. Control e is intuitive because E is the hotkey for Intel structures. And as an Illuminate player, I couldn't survive without Control h uh, selecting transports quickly or sometimes just finding out where your transports are is essential for a good harp rush. Of course, other factions benefit from this hotkey too. The reason I use Control h is that H is the hot build for a T2 transport. Uh, select your ACU is something that I only use since recently. I'm still trying to get used to it. I believe it's going to be great. And Control s is very easy to reach and it's a free hotkey since I'm using Control shift s for mass storage. So that's actually all I'm using from the selection category. Of course, you can use more if you think it's useful. Just make sure to unbind anything you don't want to use to avoid hitting it by accident. Because hitting keys by accident and having something happen you are not aware of always sucks. Now, let's move on to UI. Uh, this category is super easy. Uh, I have everything on default, except I remove actions I don't use. So I scroll through it slowly and you can see for yourself. Uh, game. Uh, game is a low interest category for anything except replays. I'll skip it since it does not affect gameplay. Chat. Uh, scrolling through the chat takes a long time with or without these commands. Do whatever you like with them, but it's best to just always read the chat without scrolling. About debug, here it is. I removed all actions I don't need to avoid using uh, these by accident. And uh, I just use Shift F6 to get the unit blueprints for custom mods and the standard Alt F2 for the cheat menu in Sandbox. Alt and T is for teleporting units in Sandbox games with uh, cheats enabled. So these are these two are useful for anyone, I would say. This one is useful for people who, uh, who code sometimes. And the rest is like for developers, I guess. And a camera, camera. Um, I removed all actions I don't need uh, to avoid using cameras, uh, camera commands by accident. And I think some of these can actually break your reclaim count overlay for one game. You should also unbind anything you don't need. The three actions I have assigned in here are for making YouTube thumbnails, uh, this one, or tracking units in my videos, uh, these two. They are hard to reach on the keyboard, which has the benefit of not pressing them by accident. So anything you only use in a few situations should be hard to reach on your keyboard. So that's actually all from uh, here, except for custom keys. I don't have a lot of custom keys, and as I mentioned earlier, not all of them work properly. Uh, some are barely different from the standard issue hotkeys. For example, my hotkey for selecting on-screen idle engineers does not include the ACU, while the one offered by the game also includes the ACU if it's idle. If you would like to fine-tune everything to the last detail, or don't want to get used to certain aspects of standard hotkeys, making custom hotkeys is an option. To set up custom hotkeys, please read Anil9's guide that is linked in the video description below. If you have any technical questions about the process of setting up custom hotkeys, please post them under the guide in the forum. Now, what is left? Well, how do you memorize and master hotkeys? 
After setting everything up, perhaps you're wondering how you should do that. It's actually pretty easy. Never use your mouse again for anything you can use a hotkey for. If your first thought is something like, but I'll be so slow in the next couple of games that I will drop down in rating, well, that's tough luck then. You have been trying to run without learning how to walk first. Now you have to take responsibility. Stop pretending you can run and learn how to walk. You should already know some of the hotkeys by heart just from watching this video and setting them up. As for the others, remind yourself that hot build is clearly structured. Unit hotkeys are based on the order at which they appear in the build menu. Structure hotkeys are organized in families of similar structures, and the high interest stuff is usually on the left side of the keyboard. Selection hotkeys are often a spin off of hot build hotkeys modified by control or control and shift. And if selection hotkeys get too complicated, just assign a control group and use that. And lastly, you can of course look at hotkey labels while playing. These guys, these labels. If you assign a hotkey, FAF displays it as a label on the icon in the build menu. Hotkey labels should be enabled by default, but if you switch them off by accident, you can re-enable them in the options if you play patch 3686, still upcoming, or higher. Checking out the options may be interesting if you haven't done so yet, because they offer several ways of customizing your user interface. Uh, for example, there is there is a cycle preview for Hotbuild that displays what structures can be accessed through a hotkey as you press it. So if you want this, you can switch this on. I hope that uh, this guide helped. Subscribe, don't subscribe, I don't care. It's your body. Do what you want with it. And in the meantime, enjoy your new hotkeys and happy cleansing.